My name is Patrick DePaula, and I'm here to present my capstone. It's called A Step in Education by Utilizing the Past and the Present. All right. My mission statement, as I made this project at our capstone, my goal was to use the skills that I learned to, you, to solve a real-world problem. Okay. So what exactly is the problem that I chose? Well, the problem, unfortunately, is American public school education, specifically from kindergarten through 12th grade. Consider the data. The U.S. was ranked 27th in math, 17th in reading, and 20th in science. We were in the bottom half of the rankings, according to the 2012 PISA assessment. Secondly, we spent the most out of almost any country, $115,000 per student, from kindergarten all the way through 12th grade. And what else? Well, the U.S., in the U.S., the public schools account for 74% of the majority of secondary schools. That means our education for the majority is administered by these public schools, yet the results are so low. Simply put, American secondary public school education must improve. And a quote from Barack Obama should suffice. He said that education, what you make of your education, will decide nothing less than the future of this country. He wasn't only talking to students, but to educators. My solution, it aims to create competition in the industry of supplementary education. That is, not to replace the curriculum, but instead something that helps it. All right, and also increases the demand for graphic designers. That is my aim. Lastly, it aims to improve the learning of students by measured, as, as measured by test grades. All right, back to the past. So the attitude I had while researching this was to go back into the past and all the different disciplines and see how they all forge into one topic as a capstone. And the attitude was captured by this one quote by C.S. Lewis. But in reading, reading great literature, I became a thousand men, yet remained myself. And the one thing I discovered in the past was memory back then was of the utmost consequence. As David Hume points out, no man could make a figure without the talent of speaking. That is, no one could make a living without being able to speak. And how could they speak? They created really long speeches. How were they able to remember them? Well, David Hume points this out too. Memory was so important that without it, you couldn't make a living. But how exactly did those ancients memorize? That was a question I had as researching into the past. And I found out there's this method. It's called the method of loci. And it's a method that allows them to reorganize information by using visualization. And by visualization, I mean imagining a space. And imagining the space, but not only that, but associating an idea or concept with it. It's as if I'm walking towards my house, and I remember, I'm trying to remember to buy something from the grocery store. I would associate that item with the door of my house. So if, as I imagine myself walking through my house, I open the door and I see the object. That's exactly how the ancients memorized those long speeches. And this was really effective. So what was the clue from the past? Well, the clue from the past that I found was the ancients used visualization, specifically spatial visualization, to remember and organize information. But I didn't stop only at the past. I wanted to research the present. Okay. So the attitude I had while researching the present was captured in this quote by Matthew Goldfinger. Creating a better future requires creativity in the present. So the main question I asked myself was, regarding the clue that we found in the past, is there any company or industry that takes advantage of it and uses it in education? To my surprise, there's a resounding yes. This company, as you can see here, is called Picmonic. Picmonic is a company that's very cleverly named. Pick for picture and monic for mnemonic and it's catered towards med school students. This might sound ridiculous, and it looks ridiculous, but this is exactly what Picmonic is. It aims to help med school students solidify the concepts they learn in med school. How? By creating ridiculous pictures. If you see in this picture right here, there are two things that stand out. There's a phoenix, a genie, and they're both typing on typewriters. And in biology, if you do not know, these are two con concepts, phenotype and genotype. And just by seeing this, med school students are able to remember and fully and deeper understand the material. And how do I know this is not just a mere talk? Well, they did experiments to prove it. Every single person who was treated with a picmonic learning system, as in they had to use it to study for tests, these were med school students as the subjects, every single one of them did better than the people who did not study the picmonic. None of them did worse. In fact, 
per, every single one of them performed at least 55% better on higher order thinking tests. This means it was not just memorization, they had to critically think. So, bottom line, every single person who was tested with the Picmonic learning system, none of them did worse and every single one of them did better, even up to 331%. All right, so what's the clue that we found from this present? Well, visualization is even more powerful with weird pictures. So my solution is to integrate the effectiveness of visualization, as we found in the past and even in the present, to public school education. And how exactly does that work? Well, my inspiration came specifically from Picmonic. Their pro product is aimed towards med students. Why? They have a very vast curriculum and it's all, it's all centralized. So my idea was, this is also effective in public schools where the curriculum is also centralized. There are sort of teaks and conformities that you have to meet. That is why this product, this is my product. My product is called EdVision. Bringing visualization to education. And Ed is for education, vision, it's also for visualization.